guys so it is about 10 34 in the morning on monday um i started this a little earlier than i think i was going to but because that's because i wanted to sit and talk with you guys about a lot of things that are going to be happening here over the next month it's still the 29th of june so i still have a couple of days before july actually starts so if you guys watched any of the videos i did in june that were about different authors or different kinds of books i wanted to read that were from different marginalized communities like authors of color containing um you know maybe characters of color books by lgbtq authors or including lgbtq characters books that discuss things about mental health and uh books that are written by trans or non-binary writers and or contain trans or non-binary characters those are the kinds of books i'm planning on reading over the course of the month and in and in my july tbr i did a more extensive rundown of all the books that i have that i would like to read both physically and on my kindle and basically what i plan on doing is i have a bin in my library area where i have all of those books put into that on little slips of paper and each time i fit, get ready to read another book i will draw one out of there now some of them i may change choose to do the audiobook if i can access it because maybe my library has it and i do want to try to utilize my library a little more i probably will not get through all of those i think there were at least 50 books in total that were in that entire list of all the books I have physically and all the books I have on my Kindle. And I have not purchased any more since making that video. I don't plan on purchasing any more um, because I am trying to save up for my wedding now and Robert and I are trying to like budget out our stuff. So books are kind of on a ban for right now for me so I can try to save as much money as I can. But also one thing, other thing I wanted to do in the month of July was start a new writing project. So I am participating in Camp NaNoWriMo for the very first time. I tried doing NaNoWriMo I think a few years ago and I just didn't work. I wasn't officially on the website or anything though so it was kind of more for my own personal thing and I was working on my mystery novel that I've been talking about for a while now. That is still in the baby reading process. I'm still waiting on people to send me um, their stuff. Unfortunately with the whole pandemic and everything people are still having a hard time with you know finding time to do things like that because they're still having to take care of their kids or whatever the cause may be they just don't have the time to sit through and read it i have one person who's already sent me back though their beta read and was very very helpful but for camp nano rhino i've decided i wanted to work on a different project that i've kind of had stewing in my brain for probably about four or five months at this point and I'm very excited about it. The only thing I will say is that it is inspired by the Mummy movies, which if you guys do not know, those are my favorite movies of all time, with the exception of the third one. The third one was not really that great, nor is the more, more modern adaptation with Tom Cruise. I hate those. Those are like not even in my realm of consciousness at this point. But the book is going to be kind of inspired by that it is planned to be a standalone i do not plan on it being like a full-on series because i think that this is a story where it's just going to be one and done and that's it but it is going to be for those fans that really enjoy the mummy movies today though i am going to be working on the outline of it after i finish with work and get a couple things done then come wednesday which is the first of july i can get started with writing on that and my plan is every day i want to write for a about an hour. Now I don't know necessarily what the word goal is. I have it set for 10,000 because I it's going to be a very very rough draft really just getting down um, ideas and main storylines that I think are going to work um, and kind of that's going to come more because I'll be building the outline and once I have the outline I'll have a better idea of what each scene is that I want because I'm very much a plotter. I'm not a pantser kind of person. I can I'm more of a pantser when it comes to actually writing the stuff but I have to plot it out first before I actually get to the real story. And then from when I get to writing, that's kind of where I do more of my pantsing. So I'm kind of both, but I think I err more on the side of the plotter side just because I sit down and actually take the time to build an outline. Um, but then there are times when I do go through the writing process that things do change. A lot of things changed from the first draft of my mystery novel to now where I've extended things. I've changed the ending of the story a little bit. I changed 
um, like the third act in general a lot because of the fact that there were so many other things I wanted to involve with it that I think came in around draft two, draft three kind of thing. Now I'm not going to hold myself to that one hour writing goal every day because um, I am going to have a few days this month that is going to kind of impede on that. I'm going to try to. I'll at least like make the attempt to make some kind of notes for what I want maybe over the course of the month for days I can't really sit and write. The reason I say that is because from the 5th to the 7th right before my birthday Robert and I are going on a little vacation for my birthday. We are going away um, and so I don't really want to bring my laptop. I really don't want to sit and focus on any of that. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to have time to get a videos edited or anything. Um, I'm gonna try my hardest to make sure that they're edited before we leave, but also on the 4th I'm gonna be with my family because our normal 4th of July festivities got kind of canceled with the whole pandemic thing happening and everyone wanting to be safe but my family is all perfectly healthy no one has um, been in contact with people with the coronavirus so what we decided to do is because I can't celebrate my actual birthday with them which is on Wednesday the 8th um, we decided to have like a little bit of a get-together with just like my immediate family like my parents my sister and my grandparents and uh, kind of just get together to do like a little bit of a barbecue, have some hot dogs and hamburgers and all that stuff to celebrate my birthday with them because I'm not gonna be able to see them on my actual birthday and pretty much the next day I will be gone on vacation for like three days. So I'm super excited about that. I have not been on a vacation in a long time. Uh, it's been a few years at the very least. Uh, I think the last time I went on vacation that was more than a day was when I went to Mackinac with Robert a few years ago. And uh, we've gone on like other trips here and there, but they were only like maybe a day, a day and a half. And so this is the first more than day and a half trip that we're making. And I'm really excited because I don't know where he's taking me. I don't know what he has planned. Uh, he did for my birthday already though, get me Stardew Valley for my Switch, which is another thing I want to get into is I want to get back into playing Animal Crossing again because Yesterday, uh, two days ago was the first day I had played it in like three or four weeks and I miss it. I really do want to use that, especially when I want to listen to audiobooks over the course of the month. And I also want to play Stardew Valley because I have heard a lot of people say that it's a very fun game. I've never played it myself. Um, I'm a little lost already though. I'm at the very beginning and I don't know how stuff's supposed to work if I have to wait a few days for things to like pop up and people to tell me what I'm supposed to do. Um, but I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna use the next month to really like get involved with those. Like I have so many things I wanna do over the course of the month and continue on with. Um, I also want to today start going back into doing a workout routine about every day and maybe taking a break like on the weekends. Like during the week I actually do workouts but then like Saturday and Sunday I just you know not do anything or do kind of more of a low impact thing i'm not 100 percent sure hello everybody it is wednesday it is just after 10 o'clock in the morning um i've had a little bit of a busy day so far and we'll continue to have a bit of a busy day today um i just got a lot of stuff that's coming in and we're getting some kind of bigger projects also flowing in so next few weeks are probably going to be pretty busy here for me with work but that's fine because it helps make the day go by very very quickly uh last night ended the house cup-a-thon hufflepuff unfortunately came in last place but i'm very proud of where my team ended up because we had so many people read so many great books that they ended up loving and i'm just really proud that we had such a good time this round was very very fun for the prefects as opposed to just you know just the participants we had a lot of fun really getting involved with a lot of the stuff going on this this round and we're really excited to bring you guys the next round whenever that happens we're not entirely sure when it's going to happen again if we're going to wait until january of 2021 or if we're going to have it earlier i have no idea the prefix have to sit and discuss all of that but um today is the first day of july so i have officially one week until my birthday i have a lot of goals for myself today so let me run down with you what i have planned for the day after i finish up work so first i'm going to go get my nails done i have to remove the nail polish that's on my nails currently during my lunch and so then i'm going to come back and do a workout i've worked out the last two days and it's been really really nice 
and immediately I'll like hop in the shower. Um, today I do need to wash my hair. I wash my hair about every other day um, just because my hair doesn't really develop a lot of oil but especially during the summer um, it might do that more and I'm kind of trying to gauge exactly how much I need to wash it in, in the summer because like in the winter it doesn't really get super oily because it's colder and then like the spring it's kind of the same thing. The fall is pretty much the same thing as well but the summer I do know I sweat a lot more and I think over time I've just started to sweat more in general because um I don't have like the same kind of body system that I used to have when I was younger because in the summer I wouldn't really sweat a lot growing up but this summer already I'm sweating a lot more than I normally am so I think that I need to like change up like some stuff here with like how often I um like actually take a shower how often I in those showers wash my hair kind of thing i'm kind of still trying to gauge it just because it's still fairly early in the summer while i'm working i need to book a couple of different appointments for my wedding i have to book um spa day stuff for myself and my bridesmaids my maid of honor um for like the not the day before the wedding but the second to last day before the wedding and i also need to book a hair appointment for the day of the wedding so then otherwise after i get done with my shower and stuff, I'm going to be posting pictures of the two videos that are going up on my channel today on Instagram. I'm also gonna be posting my first read of the month, which I will be drawing here for you guys in just a second. And then I do want to do some research on Buddhism. I'm kind of getting back into doing that because I've been putting it off for like about a month now and I do miss it and I wanna continue with it. Um, but then I'm also going to try and read at some point tonight and I'm gonna try my, to write for an hour. Today's the first day at Camp Natal Rhino. I'm really excited. Um, I've since Monday kind of changed a little bit of what I wanted to do with this book. It was gonna be more inspired by the mummy movies but I think that it's going to be slightly different. It's still going to have a lot of the elements that the mummy movies do have, which is like the idea of bringing something back to life and having a, a really bad thing happen because of that. But it's not going to be placed in like Asian Egypt. It's not going to be placed with like a pharaoh or um, princess of Egypt. It's actually going to be based on somebody very, very different from that. And I'm really excited because the character that I picked is actually a historical figure that I think kind of got the shit end of the stick when it comes to when she was around. And a lot of people think of her as kind of like a bad person because of a lot of the things that she did do in her later life that were really terrible. But I feel like that a lot of people misunderstand what her past was and exactly I kind of wanted not make it necessarily a sympathy story for the character but I want to kind of reinterpret the story of this particular historical figure and bring to light some other issues that I think may have been glossed over in terms of the possibility of why she became who she was almost like not necessarily bringing sympathy to a villain but kind of showcasing that she wasn't exactly completely a villain it was kind of more of like because of what she had gone through she kind of did things that i think most people wouldn't because she was trying to right some wrongs that she thought were done to her and to her country and all these things because of what her father did things of that nature and i don't want to say who it is but if you might be a bit of a history buff you might know who i'm talking about but you have to be very very well versed in uh history I think to kind of get that because that could be very very many people that I'm speaking on um so I'm really excited though because I, I did some research on it as I was working on the outline for this book on Monday and I was enraptured with the story of this historical figure and I thought that it was going to be so fun to build this story and so I built out an outline for it and I have an idea of kind of how I want the three acts to be set up and truthfully that's all I have. I just have some basic notes on the three acts and I'm just going to kind of go from there because the way that I wrote, I want to write this one, I want to be slightly different than how I did my first book. I have made a decision though that this coming weekend when I celebrate like things with my birthday, like when I go to my parents' house on the 4th of July and then while I'm on vacation with Robert on the 5th, 6th, and 7th, I will not be doing several things. I will not be writing. I will not be working on videos. So it is possible that some of the videos that I have working on this week that I will be filming on Saturday will not be out till later in the week. So I apologize if that's the case, but I really wanted to make sure I took the time to actually enjoy my vacation and enjoy being present and those moments with Robert because it's a very, very important time. 
and also I will be reading but I'm not going to be taking a bunch of books with me. I'm going to take probably my current read and maybe another book depending on how far I am in my current read and what I think I will be able to do in the time that I'm on vacation because I don't really know necessarily what is going to be we're going to be doing. The, everything is a complete surprise to me. I am going to be told today a couple things about what's going to be happening and I'm going to be able to make some executive decisions of what we're going to be doing. Without further ado, let us draw the first book I'm going to be reading out of all of the books I have decided to read in July. So I'm going to do, I'm going to mix this up as best I can. All right, here we go. So the first book that I will be reading in the month of July is going to be Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. Oh my gosh. Okay. That makes me so excited. I have been wanting to read this book for so long. And especially when the movie came out, I was so excited because this book means so much to so many Korean and Asian Americans. Like it is so amazing how much this book has really transcended the whole movie industry in terms of the representation of Asian people and specifically Koreans. And I just, I don't know, I've heard so many good things about how the story is and how it's a little bit of a drama fest, but how it's very fun and how it's very, you know, it's it's an adult kind of romantic story, but there are a lot of things that are discussed about Korean culture and things of that nature. So I'm just so, so excited. I cannot wait. I'm so happy. I also like to work with audiobooks over the course of the month that I can access through my library. So one of the audiobooks I do have is The New Jim Crow. I don't necessarily remember who it's by, but it's an older kind of book that talks about the fact that there's a lot of black people specifically that get incarcerated or get thrown into prison for various things and kind of this idea of mass incarceration. Um, which is something I remember reading a lot about when I was taking sociology classes in high school and in college and how it's a really huge issue because there's a very disproportionate number of black people in prisons that are either wrongfully imprisoned or are people that get very severe sentences for very minuscule things like uh, having pot, for instance. That's a really big thing I remember hearing a lot about is how many black people are in prison for pot, for ridiculous sentences. But then there's white people that do the same thing and they get way shorter sentences because many people don't know and don't understand that black people typically in the justice system are looked at as kind of more... I don't know, not necessarily a flight risk, I would say, but for some reason, there is some disconnect with how white people and black people that have the same sentence, like they don't necessarily always have the same sentences. And there's some weird thing that happens because black people are always treated much more harshly when it comes to sentencing than white people. And I don't know if it's because they're all being dealt with by white judges or if there is truthfully a I know there's a systemic issue when it comes to it right down to the bone like there is a systemic racist issue that comes into the justice system but I won't be able to tell you necessarily right now why some of that stuff might be happening I think that might be something that the book does go into is like how much kind of what is exactly happening in this systemic racist justice system that we have in the United States I will say the book is fairly older I think that the copy that I have is at least 10 years old um at least that's the audiobook version that I have obtained from my library so I don't know necessarily if all of the information that's going to be in there is going to be completely accurate for now, but it is something that I've been hearing a lot of people talk about as a really, really important text to read if you are looking to in, to expand your thoughts and expand your horizons when it comes to learning about systemic racism, especially in the U.S. That is my plan for the day. I think I'm going to just watch the last couple YouTube videos I have in my Watch Later playlist, and then I will be transitioning for the rest of the day to that audiobook because that is something I do want to work through. And on my breaks today, I'll be working with Crazy Rich Asians, which I'm so excited about. I, I cannot even begin to explain how excited I am. Okay, just read the prologue and I'm already really liking this. So the prologue basically takes place in 1986 in London, I believe. And there is this um, Chinese family. I, I want to say that they're Chinese, but I thought that this um, story dealt with Koreans because there's parts of it that go into Singapore. Um, but there's some kind of Asian-based family, they discuss the fact that they might be Chinese, but it could be completely wrong because there's a character in here who's white, who is the manager of this hotel that this family is going to be staying at. They're obviously very wealthy. It's kind of just discussed at the very beginning that they're wealthy and they're being treated um, as second class because this manager of the hotel who's white basically 
has like racist ideas about the Chinese and basically doesn't believe that because they're um, Chinese that they can even afford this particular suite that they're taking up in the um, in the hotel. But they're a very wealthy family. And uh, so basically this white racist character gets his shit handed to him when uh, the owner of the hotel comes in and is like, hey, I've sold the hotel and it's to this lady right here. And it's one of the women in this family. And so the white racist guy is like stuttering. It is so great. Like that, oh, that scene just made me very, very happy because I hate when white people specifically that have racist tendencies don't get their shit handed to them when it comes to these kinds of situations where they have some kind of power like they're in management they're in some kind of like um especially like hotel based things and so i always love seeing white racist people get their shit handed to them whether it's they lose their job for their racism or they get reprimanded for their racism like it's just very satisfying to see one other thing too i really like is how in this prologue there are footnotes especially when it comes to like the uh different phrases that are used in this language it is very helpful i enjoy books that include footnotes because it helps me to better understand the story um which is why i really liked especially in like the in fantasy that's really really important with like um especially jay krustoff's nevernight series how nevernight there was a lot of like footnotes in regards to building on the historical context of the story and how why certain things were the way they were or what certain things meant within the world um i like that this one includes footnotes like that in terms of discussing more of like the language and like what exactly things mean and how it is contextualized within the scenario kind of thing so that makes me really happy to see that makes me very excited to see how the story goes and how those footnotes are going to help with developing the story um but so far yeah prologue was really great i really like it um i just that scene with the racist white man at the hotel was very satisfying and it makes me very excited for how the rest of the story is gonna go got my nails did so happy they look so nice now Oh, it's been so long. It's been like a year since I got them done. Hi guys, so it's about 11.30 at night right now. Um, I'm gonna be getting into bed here real quick. I just got involved in doing a writing live stream. Well, I didn't get involved with it. I participated in a writing live stream with a bunch of people that um, I saw going on YouTube. One of the channels I follow, Savvy Writes Books, which I will leave in the description for you guys if you want to check her out. Every Wednesday she hosts this like writing, writing sleepover event where like late at night on Wednesday nights that she gets with a few different people for writing sprints. Um, and I did participate in the first round of that today, but I, it's fairly late for me. So I wanted to kind of just take some time to, um, you know, go to bed and everything. I did a little bit of writing beforehand of my NaNoWriMo project. Today I ended up with a total of 958 words, I think. I've actually done quite a bit of reading. I just have been listening more to my audiobook than I've actually been physically reading today, but I am a little under halfway done now with The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. Um, the whole thing with this is this is a 10th anniversary edition, and apparently this actually, this 10th anniversary edition came out in 2020, like earlier in 2020. So there is a preface in the beginning of the book that really discusses a lot of the things that um, this book goes into but may be kind of dated because the fact that the book itself was published in like 2010 um, around the time of when Obama was still president things of that nature so it's basically it was a preface saying that a lot has changed since then with the election of Trump and the continued movements of racism within the country because of Trump's election. There are a lot of things in terms of the original content of the book that haven't really changed. So the author basically had said that the things that they would add to the book itself would basically make it an entirely different book. So the whole preface was kind of talking about how the, a lot of the things in current society have changed, but how the original stuff in the book is the same but there have been changes even to that. But I did get through the first about 20 pages of Crazy Rich Asians. I'm on page 22. I read the prologue in the first chapter and so far it's pretty okay. Um, I have seen though that this is very much going to be one of those stories where it's like going to be very much a kind of culturally dramatic kind of thing. And what I mean by that is that basically this is one of those stories where like somebody who's really popular like it's basically like celebrity drama if you will. 
um, in terms of the cultural drama because the whole story is supposed to be about this guy who is apparently like the, one of the most eligible bachelors in Singapore. He comes from a very wealthy family and pretty much everybody in like Korea, Singapore, they know who he is. And when he brings home a Chinese American woman named Rachel to go to this wedding for one of his cousins, um, everyone's kind of like scrambling about like they basically in the very first chapter, somebody who is from Singapore and knows the family or knows of the family um, gets in contact with somebody who basically tells somebody else about this and tells somebody else like it's a whole chain of, of communication that gets back basically to one of uh, what's his name Nicholas it gets back to one of Nicholas's family members who then tells his, his family that he is going to be bringing this woman with him for the summer into Singapore for the wedding and then they're going to be basically traveling across Asia uh, for the rest of the summer for about 10 weeks or so and so it's really interesting because now I'm excited to see kind of how the dynamics work because I think this is going to be one of those stories that if I'm not mistaken the way that it was set up to in, in the movie at least from the trailers I saw was like there was going to be a lot of drama in terms of the family and whether or not uh, Rachel was going to be good enough because she's Chinese American as opposed to like a full-blooded Asian person um, no less she's not really um, full-blooded Chinese or Korean. I'm not even really exactly sure what the heritage of Nicholas is, whether he's Chinese or he's Korean or he's um, something, some kind of amalgamation. I don't quite know at this point. Um, they do talk about how the family looks Chinese, so I don't know what this means like in terms of like his heritage um i don't know if there's like some kind of crossed blood somewhere um i just i don't know they haven't really given us enough information about that because even the language like i said before like the language is kind of like muddled like it's got a lot of different things involved with it where there might be cantonese vietnamese malaysian uh all kinds of things so i don't really quite know exactly what the heritage of nicholas is whereas one of the characters that sees Rachel with Nicholas says that she it looks American born Chinese. I don't really have many thoughts on this as of yet. I like the writing style of it and like I said before I like the footnotes. I think the footnotes are very very helpful in helping with understanding some of the language that's involved in the story and some of the contextual things involved with it like the social context um, because that's incredibly important as somebody who is white and doesn't know much about um, Asian culture in general. As opposed hey guys so please excuse the fact that the dryer is going off in the background. I I'm getting some laundry finished up before I go on vacation this week. So it is Friday. It is, I think, almost 11 o'clock at night. Robert's been off to work now for a little bit more than an hour. Um, and I have the house to myself because Ryan went to go stay at his girlfriend's house and he's celebrating the 4th of July over there safely. Everyone is healthy there. Um, so because I am going to be leaving on Sunday and I have no idea how much more I'm going to get through Crazy Rich Asians and may even finish it while I'm on vacation depending on how things go, I am going to draw for the next book that I will be taking with me as like a backup for uh, if things go well enough on vacation where on our drives because we're going to be doing a lot of driving and a lot of like road tripping stuff. Um, if I can finish this I'd like to have a backup in case I do. So. This may or may not be a Kindle read. I don't know. Let's see what we're gonna get. All right, so we're gonna draw one. All right, so this is Children of Blood and Bone by Tom Tomi Adeyemi. Okay, that's awesome. So I will have to make sure I take my charger with me when I go on vacation. So, because uh, that one is on my Kindle Fire. I'm really excited about that. was one of my most anticipated reads of, when was it, that came out? 2018? And I never read it. And I have always wanted to. And I've heard that it's so good, especially in terms of it being a really good adaptation or reinterpretation, I guess, of like the Avatar The Last Airbender set up with the different nations and the different powers associated by it and actually one of my novels that I had been working on that I've kind of tabled for right now was kind of inspired in that same way as well where I was going to have several different nations with several different powers involved in a fantasy world um, but that idea got tabled because I, I just haven't really had the drive to work on that one. 
Speaking of writing, I did not write at all today or yesterday. I did, like I said on, when was it, Wednesday, I did write almost a thousand words. I haven't really picked it up again today or yesterday because I haven't had the motivation to. And on Wednesday, I had a very particular scene in my head I wanted to write. I have another scene that I want to have happen right after that first scene that I wrote, but I want to give it some time to ruminate in my head. And my goal for the whole month was really kind of a prep goal, which was to write about maybe 10,000 words, kind of get some ideas down that I had at least. And based on the trajectory of the month, if I was to write about a thousand words each day, I would reach that goal by July 10th. And I want to make sure that I use the month to the best of my ability and give myself some breathing room between scenes to make sure that I know what exactly it is I want to write. So the first scene that came up was a very romantic scene involving my main character with her partner. Um, and the next scene that I want to write, and like you kind of get some inklings of like some tension between the two or like some issues that the two of them have. And the second scene I want to write is going to be immediately following that where we learn about the main character and kind of her past relationships and her relationship with her family because it has a huge involvement in the story and is a huge tie to her to the antagonist in a sense. So that's kind of the scene I want to build but I am still thinking of a way to build it properly and I'm not going to be writing at all while I'm on vacation like I was going to possibly write today if I felt like it but even this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I am not writing. I'm not working on anything. This video is not going to come out until probably like Thursday or Friday next week. Basically, this is where I'm going to end this vlog here. I don't really have much else I can really say at the moment. Um, I don't know when the next time is I will be starting up the next vlog. Probably not until Wednesday again of next week because that's when I'm actually going to be home and everything. So yeah, though. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys did enjoy this vlog, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you'd like to be, hit the button down below and subscribe to become an owlet in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.